All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this impromptu uh, emergency live show. Hate doing these live ones, but couldn't wait till tomorrow. Uh, let me see here. Do I sound okay? Can you guys hear me all right? Hopefully it's working out there. Okay. So we got a good crowd here. Uh, I would urge you people all to take this link, share it on social media. I'm going to actually go ahead and do that right now. I am going to go ahead and share this on the Turtle Boy Sports Facebook page. Give me one moment. There it is. Okay, cool. All right. So follow our Facebook pages. We have two pages, Turtle Boy Sports. And let's see, we live share it to the Turtle Boy Sports page as well as the Uncle Turtle Boy page. Share it to both, please. Get us out there. Clarence Woods Emerson comes back in a week. But for now, we will just continue to use these pages. Boom. There we go. Okay. Not now. And done. All right. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and share it on Twitter. So get at me on Twitter. You can find me at, uh, at Dr. Turtle Boy. That's at Dr. Turtle Boy. You can also find me at Turtle Boy Phone. Either one of those will do. Okie dokie. So it looks like we're a crowd's growing in. That's good. All right. So let me run down uh, what happened, guys, in the last, uh, I don't know, four or five days here. Uh, I did an emergency live show on, was it uh, Wednesday Wednesday night? Because I had a long day in court with a uh, person named Ashley St. Angelo. Ashley is a uh, trans, I believe the term is transgender woman who has, uh, was born biologically male, uh, transisted, I don't know, four or five years ago. And uh, on top of that, has a long and documented history of unstable behavior and abuse towards his two daughters, who both, one of them, both of them ran away from home. One of them ran away from home recently, and it was all over the news. Her name was Marissa. She was 16 years old. And we I published a blog about that because Marissa went on Facebook and said, hey, I'm alive. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I'm not missing. I ran away because my father abused me. And so I find that newsworthy. I did a story on it. I had her sister come on the show. She told her horrific tales of what it was like growing up in that household. And uh, the blog was forgotten about four months later. And then Ashley St. Angelo appeared out of nowhere and started to defame my family and write blogs about us and demand that the blogs come down and threaten us that he'd exploit my children if I failed to do what he asked or she asked rather, uh, however you want to, whatever the pronouns are, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, this all went on and uh, I refused to take it down. And even with this going on, I'm like, I could have taken the easy way out and just taken it down, but I'd be giving in to bullies and I'd be giving them the recipe for how to do this. So I went to the police, the police filed for a, uh, you know, did a, did a whole report on it. They contacted Ashley who denied everything, of course. And Ashley ended up going to the Providence superior courthouse and took out an order against me and was granted it by judge Melissa Derrigan, a temporary order that's still in existence because she is dragging this out as long as possible. She made that very clear in court to me last week. Usually these restraining order hearings are simple in and out situations. Either you've been harassing somebody or you have not. And keep in mind, uh, there is an active harassment order against Ashley St. Angelo against my family at a Lemonster district court that I got. So it, this should have been thrown out, but the judge clearly, I don't know what her deal is, but she doesn't seem to care for me very much and is choosing to drag this out. So she made it very clear to me, like, this is going to be difficult. I'm going to make this difficult for you. You're going to need a lawyer. So I went on the show last week and I shared a GoFundMe that I created for this legal defense fund, right? And we raised within four days, almost $15,000 right? That's insane. I couldn't believe it. I've never felt so supported by you people in my life uh, because it wasn't just an attack on me. It was also an attack on the first amendment. It's an attack on these girls whose voices have been silenced or who this Ashley would let as part of the agreement to take, to resolve this whole thing. The judge proposed something to me. You take the blog down and 
you go to Lemonster District Court and you ask the judge to take back that order. And in return, I'll he'll he'll drop or Ashley will drop this order. But why should I take the blog down? There's nothing wrong with the blog. I'm not going to be bullied into this. I'm not going to be silenced. I thought about it for a minute, but the more I contemplated, I'm like, I couldn't live with myself if I did that. Like I am the free speech guy and I am fighting for the first amendment. If I just cave like that, then what's the point of this even existing anymore? So I had to fight. I had to fight. And you all made that possible by donating all that money with GoFundMe. And that was great. However, I got uh, notified. I'll show you guys the notification that I got here. Share screen. All right. So I got notified of this the next day because everybody was warning me, take your money out, take the money out, go get the money out. So I, I go, I went to withdraw the money. Right. Uh, and like how it works with GoFundMe is you can go to withdraw the money. You link it to your bank account and you can set it up for daily withdrawals. So how, however many people donate that day, it just takes it right out. And that's what I wanted. And it takes two to five days for them to process withdrawals. So I got one day's worth of withdrawals. It was like $1,700 out of the 15,000. And none of it made it to my bank account. I assume that's all going to get returned to the people because it takes two to five business days for that to process. So because the next day I got this notification, your fundraiser is currently under review and withdrawals are on hold, whatever. So I'm like, I don't, I, I, they say that they're going to send you an email. I didn't get an email about like how to respond to this. So I contacted customer support. They don't have like an, a live chat or a phone number. Of course, none of these tech companies do because God forbid, God forbid they cut into their, you know, profits and actually hire human beings to work the phones, you know, like a real company does like Walmart, like the at real companies that employ hundreds of thousands of people and make billions of dollars have customer support hotlines, except for the tech companies. They seem to get away with just cutting corners and not having customer service. It's insane that our government has allowed these companies to get like this. If any other company cut corners like this and just like, well, just not going to have customer service. They're taking in billions of dollars a year. They get special protection from the federal government with CDA Section 230. They're treated like a platform instead of a publisher, even though they constantly make editorial decisions. But I digress. So I get this email uh, from GoFundMe telling me from some guy named Mohit. He says, it looks like our trust and safety team needs to speak with you. I sent and sent an email entitled important message for GoFundMe, we apologize. So I never got it. And so I contacted them and Mohit sends me this email back. And he's like, trust and safety is going to get back to you within 24 hours. In the meantime, update your GoFundMe and answer these four questions. So I did. They want to know, what's your name? Where do you live? Okay. What is your relationship and, and where is the money? Uh, who's the money going towards? Who's the beneficiary? Me. Okay. What is the money going towards? Number three. And I explained the whole thing. I even put a link to the blog. And number four, uh, how do you intend to deal with, um, I like, who is the intended recipient? So that's me, obviously. Okay. And so I do, I do their stupid dance. I dance and then I don't hear back from them. So I send them another email today. And then I got a message from Nick who says, hi, Aiden. Thanks so much for getting back to me with that. My name is Nick and I am the trust and safety manager here at GoFundMe. I took a look over your account and you've done an excellent job th with this thus far. So I'm excellent. He says, I'm good. You're doing an excellent job. Great. Awesome. Keep up the good work. And he says, uh, I do see that you have edited your fundraiser story to only include the information that we requested. Was that what you ultimately want to do? Sure. Whatever you wanted me to do, I'll, I'll do your stupid dance. Can I just have my money? Because keep in mind, like this is them interfering with our relationship, right? You chose to donate your money to me. That's you work hard for your money. You can give it to anybody you want to. You wanted to give it to me. That was your adult decision. And it was my adult decision to accept it. But the tech companies could be like, whoa, 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 whoa. We will decide who gets to pay who money in this country. Because God knows that GoFundMe is the moral compass in this country of who can 
you know, exchange currency between one another because that's somehow their job. No, it's not. No, it's not. GoFundMe and the same with PayPal. The fuck is wrong with these companies? Shut the fuck up and make money. That's your only job is to sit there and make money. You don't have to do a goddamn thing. You press buttons all day. PayPal cut themselves off for me. They probably cost themselves like $5,000 a year in transaction fees to do nothing. For what? Because to uh, because they're moral? Is that why? Is that Do you feel better about yourselves? That you, you kept people from exchanging money? Do you feel like you made the world a better place, PayPal? Because I found another way to get paid, and I'm still saying the same shit. So nothing's changed. All your fucking grandstanding is worth jack dick at the end of the day. And same with GoFundMe. It's your job to just press buttons. It's not your job to decide who's giving money to who and whether or not this is a moral cause. Just shut up and exchange the money. So he goes on and he says, you're still welcome to include the rest of your story that you'd already written. We simply wanted to make sure that you included those four points well. Okay, cool. Additionally, we do ask that you include in your fundraiser about where the funds will be donated or how they will be used should you raise more than is required. Okay, so I did that. I explained. Any extra money is going to go to other legal defense funds because I'm being sued by four other people as well. Not a problem, okay? So then I got this email back, okay? Nick seemed, I'm like, okay, Nick seems like a legit person. He seems like a human being. And most importantly, he told me I was doing a good job. I appreciate it. That was very reassuring. Sticks 30 Armageddon comes around. I start getting text messages from people. I just got my money back from GoFundMe. I go on the GoFundMe. It's gone. It's been taken down. Why? This is quote unquote, the content of your fundraiser falls under prohibited conduct section. You may view this in our terms of service. Of course, nothing in the terms of service have I violated. I'm literally raising money for legal fees. You're allowed to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course, we know by now that these trolls out there simply mass report your account. And I'm convinced that the, I don't think this is from a human being. Notice the first one said, dear Aiden, dear Aiden. It was like, hi, Aiden. That was personalized. This one is Dear GoFundMe customer, this is a copy and paste bullshit that probably comes up when enough people hit that freaking report button because they don't hire human beings at GoFundMe. They don't because they're they're not interested. They're interested in cutting corners and increasing revenue for themselves because, you know, hiring human beings, creating jobs, that costs money. They're not trying to do that. The CEO of GoFundMe wants a new jet. And that would, you know, he doesn't want to pay some lowly secretary or outsource it to the Philippines. They have somebody answer the phone. No, no, he doesn't want to do that. That's going to hurt his bottom line. So you can go fuck yourself and have this automatic email. That's what you get from them. So let me just say this. I am not, a lot of people would be like, like give up and whatever. Not me. No, no, no. This emboldens me guys. This emboldens me in the link. What we've done. Uh, I have an attorney, Mark Randazza, who's going to be coming on here momentarily. And Mark has set up a trust fund in my name that goes directly through him essentially. And so thus we are uncancelable. So in the link to this, uh, and I think can one of the mods post the link? It looks like people are already posting it. Good. Okay. Uh, in the, if you guys would like to do donate your money that has been returned to you or if you didn't give last time and you want to give a big fuck you to the tech companies, because that's what this is. This is a war, not only on free speech, but on free commerce. They're telling you where you can spend your money. They're telling you free people in the United States of America that your money is not allowed to be spent here because they know what's good for you. They are the moral ones. You're a white supremacist. You support somebody who vote violated their guidelines, whatever the hell those are undefined. Notice they don't even list what the hell was wrong with it because of course this is just a freaking copy and paste freaking email. Uh, so yeah. A anyway, um, I have a plan. So our best revenge with this guys is I know it's a pain in the ass, but let's raise more money. Let's give them the biggest. That would be the biggest fuck you ever. Wouldn't it? Because now we're not only saying fuck you to the judge and fuck you to Hamdia Ahmed and Ashley St. Angelo. And all these people that tried to cancel us, we just come back stronger. And I was just watching Tucker before this. And Tucker is my idol for a reason. Tucker Carlson is my idol for a reason. Because nobody has been tried to be canceled more than Tucker Carlson for what they say. They said that he was promoting some white supremacist theory the other day about replacement. Because he brought up the undeniable fact 
that the Democratic plan to like win elections is to bring in illegal immigrants and get them to vote Democrat and thus dilute your vote. It's the worst cup secret in the world. He pointed that out and they're saying he's a white supremacist. And you know what all Tucker does? He just comes back harder every single week. And guess what? He's got the highest rated television show in the history of cable TV. And he's like wildly successful. And, and that is the lesson here. That is why he's my idol is because if you stand up to these people, um, Americans are looking for a fighter. They see these assholes out there. They see Hamdi Ahmed's out there and you guys don't want her to win. Do you? You don't want Hamdi Ahmed to win. You don't want Ashley St. Angelo to win. You don't want GoFundMe and Twitter and PayPal and all these Silicon Valley douchebags to win, do you? So this is how you fight back. You donate to this legal defense fund and I fight for you, okay? That's how we beat them. I fight for you and I'm happy to do it. So I'm going to bring on now uh, Mark Rondazzo, who I've had on many times before, uh, who has agreed to represent me in the case in Rhode Island, and uh, we'll talk to him about it. How you doing, Mark? Can you hear me? Hold on one sec. Uh, you're muted. Hold on. You're muted. All right. Hey. How about now? Uh, very good. Thanks. You guys hear him all right? $200,000 worth of education in my head. I can't work a freaking microphone. Yeah. But. So <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Oh, man. Thanks for that speech. That was amazing. I was like screaming, cheering you while you were doing that. Wasn't somebody, I? Has to, somebody has to fight. Somebody has to fight, man. Exactly. But you you're honestly the guy. So I called you when I got out of court in Providence and I was like down in the dumps. I'm like, should I just take the stupid blog down? And you're like, you're like, I'm not telling you how to run your business, but like, I wouldn't. Look, <laughs> and look, you, you fuck. They're fucking terrorists, man. You know, you give in to this shit, it does not end. And no. you know, look, if it did, that'd be another story. I mean, I, I kind of admire that you you started off with like, all right, look, I'll just go along to get along. But no, man, you can't let him get away with this. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe that any, like the crap I see thrown at you in court is some of the dumbest crap I've ever seen. And I've made a career working on cases <laughs> with fucking numbskulls on the other side of them. You have like the, like if I were a collector of idiot lawyers, you would be like the guy that we would have a newsletter about. You'd be the guy that like comes to every conference, be like, no, nah, no, nah, check out what I've got here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, you, I'm, being, I'm being sued in four cases right now. I'm actually a co-defendant with Google and Facebook and federal court in one of them. It's the most absurd thing you've ever seen. But it's just like, you know, and I'm going to win all these. It's just a matter of how much it's going to cost. Meanwhile, I'm actually being what I consider to be defamed by people like Hamdia Ahmed. Now, you and I had a conversation about this. And, you know, when, when she said that he's a, he's a white supremacist, go and report his page. Do you think there's anything libelous to that? I mean, probably. But, you know, these, these things are often looked at as a matter of opinion. I mean, somebody could say I'm a white supremacist. Hell, somebody could say, says, there are people who say Clarence Thomas is a white supremacist. So it's all really, I, I think it's, so, it's close enough to opinion. If you were not you, I'd tell you to sue her. But you're you. Yeah, you know? but it wouldn't, it wouldn't go well? Is that what you're saying? Like the I just think, no, I think that those of us who are going to crusade oh, right. freedom of speech should give the assholes who want to say bad things about us more latitude than we would give them if we were just regular jack offs. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind when people just throw that out there on the internet. Like he's, I mean, you can't control that. People are going to say it like he's, Wait, if, I, if I sued everybody who wanted to talk shit about me, I'd yeah. have no time to represent my clients. Right. Right. But you know what? You're talking shit about me. I'm not talking shit about you. Yeah. Right? My, I've never I, heard of these pricks. Right. I mean, my problem is though, in, in this case, like I don't care about the shit talking. I care about this. Like when they get the freaking GoFundMe taken down, when they get my Facebook page taken down, which cost me so much. I mean, I used to have a page with 112,000 followers that were probably close to have half a million followers now, which I could then use to share blogs and get people to read it. And traffic would be much higher and I make more money. And like, it's gone because these activists just lie and misrepresent you. And that's when I have a problem with it. Look, I, this is, you know, I really kind of got into wanting to do free speech stuff when I was a kid and I learned about the red scare McCarthy, you know, I mean, this is the same exact thing. There's nothing different about this. 
And, you know, all these shitheads you want to say but it's a private company well you know what so was every movie studio during the red scare it's like does that make people feel better when oh huh. it's, it's it's not the government suppressing me it's just these billion dollar oligarchs i feel much better right. now thank right. you who get together and do it exactly yeah. and by so, the way who are acting on the behest of the federal government it's a li it's every time they're brought in front of every time jack dorsey and mark zuckerberg get brought in front of congress they're basically told you need to censor more. Why aren't you censoring this? And then they go and censor. So they're basically acting as agents of the federal government. Yeah. In my opinion. Huh. Okay. But uh, I, I see this as an opportunity um, because I refuse to be censored. And I think people are fired up because it's not just a shot at me. It's a shot at them too. Yeah, I agree. You know? So what, what, what are you looking at? Well, I'm looking at the figures for your GoFundMe, uh, for your, your fundraiser. How's it looking? It's pretty damn well. Uh, but now I'm having some problems because uh, I have too many transactions coming in. Jesus. All right. Turn around. Do you, you have there. another? Which can, people can donate on the channel here, right? Yeah, but the Google takes 30% if they do that. Oh, crap. Well, uh, why is it overloading? Is the server overloading? It is. That's how much support you're getting. It's okay if they can't do it. The it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go, guys. We love it. We love to see that. So, and again, I'm not looking to go and go on a wild spending spree and go to the fucking Bahamas and shit. I'm just well, looking that's to what you're gonna do money. Yeah, right. I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. Because yeah, well, people we get local counsel on it. Well, but people have people have told me, like, you know, like, why don't you just get a job or do this? And I'm like, okay, number one. I would be retreating from everything I believed in. Okay. Number two, I think these people are incredibly naive. If I just went out and got a nine to five and you think that the mob wouldn't follow me there and try to cancel me there. Oh, the, yeah. the benefit of what I do now is I'm not cancelable. Like you can't cancel me. I, you don't cancel me. I cancel you. Well, I mean, they, could. they could knock you off. You know, they could knock you off YouTube. I mean, we'd, that, we'd find a way. Like I'll, still, I'll, yeah. I hope so because that's that's what we need. Mark, we do. We, I'd I'd give people a PO box and send me checks. You know, <laughs> we'll pass the boot around. We'll have a freaking can drive, a Turtle Boy can drive in the center of town. Like we will get it done. Where there is a will, there is a way. You cannot stop free people in a free country from conducting commerce with one another. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, if you're donating right now, stop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm having them call to figure out what the hell's going on with my trust account right now. But uh, well, I've, I've never seen. Oh, one. somebody said that uh, they they maxed out Mark's fund daily limit already. He needs to up it. Jesus, how is that possible? <laughs> it's three grand. Yes. All right. Well, I you're gonna have to hit it tomorrow. You gotta have I to love. this tomorrow. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, uh, when when they open up, I'll get that fixed. I love this because it's like. Uh, uh, th these companies, I mean, think how stupid these companies are. All you had to do is just sit there and collect a check. You didn't have to do anything and just press a button and it's all set. And then you just threw away all these fees because why, why, what did they get out of it? Well, cause honestly, you know what? Five grand, they don't even bother to wipe their ass with five grand. Right. Right. I mean, you know, at PayPal, if you drop five grand on the floor, I doubt most of the people who work there would even look to pick it up. So you know, it doesn't matter. You're nothing to them. And it's not like <laughs> GoFundMe has competitors. It's not like, I mean, I mean, we kind of go, you, you created your own thing. I guess there's where there's a will, there's a way, but it's like, it's not like there's free speech alternatives to any of these platforms. No, not many. I mean, there's, there's a few companies out there that really have taken, you know, taken such a market share. Now people who are like, super libertarian might say well that's the free market in action fuck libertarian no. i hate libertarians no, oh god don't get me started on libertarians that's the free market there's nothing free about a market in which people can't conduct commerce with one another this is we're living in a uh, an, an oligarchy especially where tech and tech companies and major corporations control everything and you know what you need to do is stand up i mean we've seen governors like the governor of south dakota and literally did not sign a, a bill because she was afraid of the NCAA, a monopoly would yeah. punish her state somehow. And the, the government of Georgia, God bless them, they yeah. are being attacked by everybody. And yeah. they are not backing down. They are not backing down. And that's what you need that to was, do. I mean, that was almost hilarious. 
Because when you look at it, it's like, wait a minute, isn't like they're claiming that the Georgia law, which I will be honest, I have not looked at much of it. That part of it sounded really dumb to me. Like you can't give somebody water while they're in well, line. You can't, you can't give somebody water that says vote for Biden on it. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, what, what I read was that and yeah, I didn't really look into it because I kind of don't give a shit about Georgia. I mean, Georgia is just a place I have to change planes at a lot. It is. But, it's a hub. Yeah. So, you know, fastest, fastest, fastest growing state in the country, though, politically, it's one of the most important. Yeah. Well, you know? anyway, they, you know, they passed this law, which somebody's just got to talk to these legislators and say, listen, if you're going to pass a law that requires voter ID, you're going to get called racist anyway. Mm -hmm. Grant, I get why you want to be able to have, have voter ID. It makes sense to me. But like, don't put in the thing about giving people water, you dumbasses. Like, do they know anything about selling something to the public? But then MLB takes what? It takes takes the All-Star game out of Atlanta and then moves it to Colorado. So now it goes from like a huge majority black city where most of the people who are going to benefit from it were probably black. But because they got accused of being racist, they move it to what Denver. Right. Yeah, I, I guess my point here is that there was all this pressure. Delta, Coca Cola, see, like a lot of companies are based out of Georgia, and so and a lot of movies are shot in Georgia as well. So there's all this almost blackmail, this pressure from these very wealthy and powerful people to yeah. try to get the state of Georgia, which elected this government, to to do the, their will and not the will of the voters. And that's so undemocratic. It's like, that's what the free market looks like. Gigantic I mean, corporations bullying I mean, voters. Just to play devil's advocate. Yes. You know, corporations can lobby. I mean, it's kind of okay for that. I mean, we want that, but at the same time, I just think it's really, really funny that liberals who like a month ago would have screamed corporations shouldn't have any free speech rights corporations shouldn't be able to raise money. I hate Citizens United. Or all of a sudden going, oh, free market might be kind of cool in ideas because they're yeah. doing what I want today. As long, yeah, as long as the corporations are run by their people who institute yeah. critical race theory, then corporations are good. I mean, that's the way it comes down to here. Right. And, we're, and we're seeing it here. I mean, I, if you're keeping track at home, um, I'm back on Twitter, but I had to buy a new computer to do that. So I've been banned from Twitter, banned from Facebook 5 billion times, banned from PayPal, banned from Venmo, and add GoFundMe to the list. There's like, I am after Alex Jones and maybe like Milo, I think I might be number three on most censored guy on the internet. <laughs> like, seriously. And you've represented Alex Jones. I, I still do. Yes. I, I still do. It's but so Alex Jones is surviving, he's, he's not dead. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, he's probably taking a hit. Yeah. No, oh. he's, he's, you know, Alex is, uh, Alex is a survivor. Yes. Right. Alex has got a, a, a bunker in more ways than one and is, is not going to get subsumed. But it's because he's got such a huge fan base. Like his fans won't let it happen. And right. you know what? I don't give a crap if you, I, I don't agree with half the stuff he says. I mean, I've gone on his show. And just been bewildered sometimes. Like he'll ask me questions and I don't even understand the question. Did you, you know, represent? Did you represent him in the Sandy Hook thing? I am uh, representing him. In I, I heard in his deposition. I don't know if it was deposition that he, his basically his defense was like, "I was on all types of drugs. I got um, all types of drugs when I said that." I I was not his lawyer at that time. Okay, right. so, <laughs> but it's a good excuse. I mean, if I was anything, but I mean, I would I, assume he was. <laughs> That's I, you, you know, I. No comment on that. No comment. No comment. Okay. Got, I got to be careful about what I say about, you know, active clients, active cases. But Of course. Of course. I will. But, you know, Alex is a, uh, you know, he's a very patriotic guy, you know, like you, it, because he believes in what the actual fucking country is supposed to stand for. I don't care what he has to say. I care that he's able to say it. You know, and he's he's crazy sometimes, but like he's funny. Like, you know what he got kicked off Twitter for is he confronted Oliver Darcy. I know. CNN, basically the whistleblower, who always just like tries to get people kicked off. He confronted him in person. He live streamed it on Periscope. And yeah. that, that got him banned because he was right. bullying a guy who was trying to cancel him. Right. Can there, you know, there, there was a time, you know, when I, when I first started studying First Amendment law, like, you know, I, I, I worked with a lot of media lawyers who told me about how in all any First Amendment case, the press was usually there to back up 
the pro free speech side. Usually. Right. Usually. Right? I mean, and it didn't matter who they were because the press knew that they lived and died by the First Amendment. So some small, tiny publisher is getting hit with a problem. They realize the risk to them. And then, you know, I started to notice a little bit of a shift in like the early 2000s when the press started, you know, I, they, it's not that they didn't come into legal fights that weren't about them, but they were always trying to move to have the rules only apply to them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like there's this law in Florida that requires five days pre-suit notice before you file a lawsuit against somebody for defamation. It's supposed to give you the ability to do a retraction and whatnot. And then I noticed that, you know, I'm fighting all over trying to find ways to get this to apply to bloggers because it doesn't say bloggers. And I'm like, no, it should be for anybody on the Internet. You know, in the major media companies, when they got a hold of one of those cases, they would argue, well, you know, they would really only argue for it to reach to them. And I get you don't have to always argue for other people. But when you're doing constitutional litigation, that is what it's about. You know, you, yeah. nobody makes money off that. It's going to be a pain in your ass. All right. You know, and, and you're, you're never going to raise enough to cover it all. I, I guarantee you. No, but, no. But it's all right. I'm not going to take your house or anything. But, you know, yeah. but but, you know, you're not doing this for you. Right. Like, I you just know? want to talk. All I want to do is just talk and blog without, like, going bankrupt. That's all I want to do. In a, Everybody, in a there's a there's an old uh, kind of old movie now called Good Night and Good Luck. And it's about Edward R. Murrow, who was a journalist during the McCarthy years. And he finally just said, you know, he's the one who took down McCarthy. There is no one McCarthy now. It's it's so decentralized. So how do you do it? First of all, can I just say Wait. Joe McCarthy gets a bad name? Like uh, this whole thing, like McCarthyism, we talk about that time in history when he was basically thrown out there that there's commies everywhere. Um, yeah. He wasn't that wrong. Like, let's be honest. These institutions that we're seeing today are run by communists, okay? Right. Well, that's what they are. <laughs> You're an American. You got a right to be a communist. Right, you do. You do have a right you to be a right communist. to be a fascist. You got a right, right to be a Nazi. You got a right to friggin' put, you know, ketchup on your steak. I mean, you got a right to do any of these things. That's what it's about, you know. And and I would I would hope that even if somebody, if there were a counterpart of yours, somebody like you who was a communist who got banned for the same reasons, you, you know, defend them. Well, I would, you know, yeah, I, don't, you I don't care. I would too. I would too. I can walk out of my office one moment, a Black Lives Matter guy can walk in right after. I'll defend any of their rights to free speech. But the problem is there isn't. That way, nothing. There is no left-wing version of what I do. That's the problem is that the left-wing has turned into the whistleblowing and just like the censorous censor and that was not that the way that it was growing up in the nineties as a kid for me, it's like the right was the censorious party. They were the ones yes. that wanted to ban pornography and yeah. you know, all, you know, fun stuff. And yeah. the left was the one that was like Bill Clinton, you know, like sex, drugs, and alcohol. And that's how hey. the time. And yeah, that's that was what attracted me to the democratic party as a young man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's attracted a lot of people. But I was like, now, kidding me? Gary Hart looks like he's having way more fun than freaking Ronald Reagan. <laughs> yeah, you know, Gary Hart's wife actually. Gary Hart's wife actually died today. So rest oh, in peace. R.I.P. R.I.P. You know, but um, yeah, it is. Uh, it it really was. They were the fun ones. You know, it was Sam Brownback was the fucking blowhard. Yeah. You know now now you know P but you know the PMRC. You remember? I mean. They like to blame Al, you know, blame uh, what's his name, Ralph Nader, for Al Gore losing Florida in two thousand, lost by five hundred something votes. How many of those votes do you think you would have got, Al, if your wife wasn't running the PMRC? What's the PMRC? I don't even know what that is. You're not even old enough to remember this. Was that, like, was, that was the first election I voted in. Okay, well that that was well before that. Al Gore's wife was running the Senate committee, trying to like, you know. Get all worked up about it. music. That's so D. Snyder from Twisted Sister, Frank Zappa, and Bob Denver were like the only three musicians that had the balls to show up. Imagine those three guys sitting next to each other testifying in Congress against censorship. No, Dude, Bob Denver, let me tell you something. He rocked that shit. I don't even like Bob Denver. Like, I don't like his haircut. I don't like his music. But I'll tell you what. Love the guy's politics when it comes to freedom of speech. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I worry about the future, but at the same time, I kind of don't because 
I feel like this is an opportunity. Like I can't get like, yes, this sucks. This all gets refunded, but like this get, there is a, this angers people. I can't tell you how many text messages I just got from people who are like, dude, what I, I want to double what I sent to you. Like how yes. dare they tell me that I yes. can't spend money where I want to fuck them. Like people want right. it. There is a growing hunger for that out there. That is why Tucker Carlson is killing it because he's yeah. the only guy that stands up to this bullshit. It's why the Kirk and Callahan show when it was on the EI was the top rated show. Cause people are thirsty for that. They don't want just another watered down politically correct, safe show. They want, people to tell the truth dude remember when howard stern was funny and entertaining i mean yeah, he's doing the shit you know the thing that really kills me is like when cnn and and people like like organizations like cnn and people like howard stern are joining in on this yes you know what for for one media person especially somebody as outrageous as him or, you know and cnn for cnn to be on it like a search and destroy mission for its competitors is just disgusting, you know. I'm, oh, all Brian I'm still talking about they boycotting it. Atlanta, where those yeah. tricks that work at CNN all live. But guess what? People don't buy it. Like Brian Stelter dedicates his entire show to Tucker Carlson and Tucker Carlson just laughs at him. And people love that. They're like, yes, we have a fighter who's not backing down. Who's going to like Tucker's entire show tonight. I was watching up here was doubling down on his show last week that they were all whining about. And he's just like, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say the same fucking shit. And guess what? I'm, I'm going to get more viewers than made out. I'm going to get more views than all of them. And my, by the way, my, my advertising slots are filled because Mike Lindell has bought half the station and the Talbot brothers have bought a quarter of it. And uh, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> like, it's like, it's beautiful. And because there are people out there that have, and this is what people have to do. You have to start supporting financially things that you like, because they're not going to let you hear it for free anymore. And so that's how you fight back. You use your money, which is free speech, to hear yep. free speech, essentially. Yeah. So no, it's, it's it. Look, you got to vote with your wallet. That's the only reason any of this is working. You know that. I mean, all of a sudden, like capital became woke. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen happen, like in my entire life. Capital, like money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It was a time when all the big companies were supporting Republicans, you know, and and we were all kind of like, yeah, fuck them. Well, you know, like all yeah. of a sudden. All of a sudden, they just jumped to the front of the financial line. I mean, you look at all these, like, they're raising so much money. It's incredible. Hey, like, so, uh, by the way, yeah, they're against Citizens United. If they got rid of United, they'd be fucked. They would be. Hey, people, uh, people were asking, uh, so you obviously know Alex. You think, is it a pipe dream of mine if to get Alex on the show sometime? Um, I mean, I'm not really his booking guy. But you know, I, I I will I give you my word. I will tell him about you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think him and I would hit it off. I think we'd have a good show. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I by the way, myself. if you guys want, my cash app is dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. If people out there want to do it, yeah, that do way. that. Raise it that yeah. way. I, yeah, I dollar sign I Uncle Turtle Boy. Fifty transactions a day. I don't even know this. There's thousands of dollars in there. But yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna up that tomorrow. I I guess I've never had that many people try to pay me in one day. I, I you know, guess so. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Any? Uh, why don't I take any questions? If you guys have any questions, uh, you want to ask either of us, fire away. Um, I think I've kind of hit uh, most of it. My rant I wanted to get into here. Let's see. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Any questions, guys? Ask away. Uh, Venmo. Now I'm banned from Venmo because PayPal owns them. It's like an Instagram, Facebook thing. So I'm banned from Venmo. Jesus so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cash app is like the ghetto app. But I'll do it. I'll use all yeah, of yeah. it. I, it's like for ratchets use, but I, I'm all about it. Whatever. It's, what? it's what ratchets use to like pay each other. It's like ratchets. Well, yo, you don't. Oh, ra you don't, oh, you got to read the blog more. Ratchets. Oh, okay. uh, ratchets are like you know. It's hard to define a ratchet. People that like you know sell their food stamps on Facebook and you know <laughs> like sell their kids, sell their kids on Craigslist. People like that. That's uh, awesome. We're actually having. We're in the middle right now. A party with a ratchet party. Well, we're in the middle. April is Ratchet Madness Month. We have a tournament, a, 60, a 64 Ratchet tournament in which people vote 
which ratchets should advance the next round. We're down to 32 right now. I and can't I can't your blog because I fall into a fucking rabbit hole laughing my ass off. And next thing I know, I didn't get all my work done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we avoid yeah. reading you just yeah. for that reason. Yes, you can go down a rabbit hole with some of these. You can. Uh, any other questions you guys have? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Related related to this tech stuff. Anybody? Uh, let's see. Yeah, like Ra Rachel Rollins is actually a one seed. Uh, she could be up there because she's she could she's a district attorney, but she's pretty ratchet when you get down to it, and she comes from a family of ratchets. She's a disgrace. She is. She is. You know, disgrace. Yeah. I, I cannot believe like. I'm sorry, but I used to really think the word democracy was a good thing. And I just think it's awful. Like, think of the average person. Yes, I think democracy is awful, too. I agree. Think how dumb they are. Yes. Half the people are dumber than that person. People all... The, we want them to vote. Like, the there should be a Billy Madison academic decathlon to be able to vote. Maybe not. That. Well, Maybe that's... So hard. But, like, that, you should Jim actually Crow. be amazed... That if you're really just, you got to be really dumb not to be able to get through it to get to the voting booth. They would say that's Jim Crow because that's a literacy test. No, no. There should be like traps, like, you know, a blinky light. And a if you just turn and stare at the blinky light, then you're you out. Yeah, you're you can't vote. People always say voting should be easier than buying a gun. First of all, it is. Second of all, no, it shouldn't. Buying a gun no, should be so easier than voting. Besides, you can try to find a gun these days. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, people are like, people are like, can we, uh, go to, uh, should, should I go on the offensive against someone like Hamdia? You think? Why? Just cause she cost me. I mean, I guess she didn't cost, if I can make more money then I guess she helped me at the yeah, end. Of the you're, you're way better at why bother? No, don't yeah. report to the IRS. Cause you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, it was her exercising her first amendment rights. She may have gone over the line. But give her more latitude than you than than a normal person would. Beat her in the marketplace of ideas. Yeah, I'm going to trust me. And by the yeah. way, thank you, thank you to Joanna, thank you to Megan for the donos. I appreciate that. Uh, right, any other questions, guys? Any other questions? The only other th reason I want to go after Hamdi is like I might just report her to the attorney general because she's raised fifty thousand dollars using these bogus like Black Lives Matter and like I'm going to say. Yeah, they, they probably don't. Care. You're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. They don't give a shit. Come on. They don't she's care. She's a protected class. Like they're it's bad. It's a bad optics for them to go after her. Period. You know, yeah. must be nice. No, must it's it's a it's a good time to be. Uh, it, you know, I mean, it, it, it's it's a good time to be in that situation. I guess it is. It is. It is. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, guys? Um, before we call it night here. Um, Listen, just don't, you know, you got to try to find, I mean, I'm a fine one to talk about trying to find my way, a way to divorce the 650 area code companies. But, you know, you got to try to find a way to work around them and don't be quiet about this shit. You I'm know, not going, yeah. The problem is, you know, the Wokatrons whine louder. They do. And, and they're very good at it. And, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, us normal people, you know, most of us are working for a living. You don't really exactly. have to be a professional whiner. Like, I don't have time to report people all day to Twitter. Like, I don't have fucking time for that, to organize yeah. that. Like, and I don't really want to. Like, it's not really what I believe in. But, like, it's like yeah. that they're, they're, they're so dedicated because none of these people work. Like, there are literally sleeping giants and media matters are two Twitter accounts with, like, a million combined people. Like, media matters exists every day to wake up, turn on Fox News and the Daily Wire and just get offended by shit. And then yeah. organize their mob to contact advertisers. And all they do is make Fox News and the Daily Wire stronger. Hey, for your uh, donations, do you have a P.O. box or something people could send checks to? I don't. I mean, I probably should. I can get a P.O. box. Yeah. Is yeah. that hard? You can send them to my. You want to send them to mine? I can. Yeah. I mean, P.O. box 5516, Gloucester, Massachusetts. There you go. There you just go. Make sure you put Turtle Boy in the memo line, or I'm gonna think it's a you know just a donation because I you know you you want me to shake my ass or something. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, so is uh, people are asking like how does this work? So you're not licensed to practice in Rhode Island. How do, you have to get 
What's the I Latin think- the Latin term for it, it's like pro hoc vice. So I got to get a Rhode Island guy, which there's like seven lawyers in Rhode Island. So, you know, I've talked to three of them, but uh, no, we got to get a Rhode Island lawyer to stand next to me and go, yeah, he's cool. They just vouch for you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, and if that doesn't work, we send the Rhode Island lawyer by themselves. I mean, yeah. you know, that's, that's fine too. I can, I can help them with the briefing, but like where, you know, you just cannot, Man, I cannot. I just can't believe that courtroom doors don't just like have an asshole detector for stuff like this. A filter. I mean, yeah. they some do. Like I, I, I'm aware of people who have somebody in the Quincy dist, in the Quincy clerk's office alerted me like a year ago. They're like, someone just came down here and tried to get a restraining order against you, and it was denied, and there was no no hearing scheduled. I'm like, okay, so there is a filter, and right. I told and I told the judges, I'm like. She goes, well, he applied for one. I'm like, you didn't have to give him a hearing. You chose right. to. Like, right. you, you're not required to. Like, you can, you ha- you're literally, it's in your name, judge. You use your judgment. Like, <laughs> it's what you get paid to do. Like, yeah. to, like, oh, she goes, we need to get to the bottom of this. There's nothing to get to the bottom of. I don't contact this person. I'm not harassing this person. Therefore, there should be no order. That's it. Bye. <laughs> Could you imagine if, like, if this can stand? then why can't Donald Trump go into court and say, see, and the New York Times is harassing me by writing about me. Exactly. Every it's single same person. fucking it's, thing. I mean, it's has, a little different. But. Has, the, has the judge not asked herself that question? Like, or is she, she just, that's what makes me think she's just doing this because I was rude to her clerk in an email. And I think this is just punishment for that. That's my theory. I, I will tell you, being rude to the clerk is never a winning strategy. Because, yeah. That's the one person that the judge can listen to all day. So the clerk doesn't like you. Now you're down a touch, you know, not a touchdown, but you're a field goal behind. What is a clerk anyway? Are they, are they a judge? Are they a lawyer in training? What even is a clerk? No, they, in, a, in a court, the, the clerk is like the person who works for the judge. In a federal court, clerks are um, people who actually write the, most of the draft opinions. Because people who clerk for Supreme Court justices often become Supreme Court justices. So, so oh, yeah, just, yeah. That's the best to do it. So right. clerks for a judge, sometimes they have professional clerks who have been there as a career. Do they sometimes, have to go to law school, clerks? What's that? Do clerks have to go to law school? No. Okay, no. they don't. Okay. Well, so you can be a professional clerk and never, never go to law school. But then they also have clerks that they hire. Um as law students for a learning experience. But yeah, don't be a dick to the clerk. Um, you know, and that's rough. You know, sometimes you get frustrated. It's not your fault. Um, but also, you know, she's, I mean, I've called around, talked to, a, I do a, a, a lot of research on a judge when I'm thinking about being in front of them. And every lawyer I've talked to in Rhode Island that knows her says she's a pretty good judge. I think I, I've seen enough of these hearings that I know that at the very first one, when you're not there, they're going to hand them out like candy. Because look, it's it's two weeks. What's going to happen in two weeks? Okay, you come in in two weeks and maybe I can throw it out. But no judge ever wound up on the front page of a newspaper for unjustifiably giving a restraining order. Mm, that's right? true. I mean, they give them out all the time to yeah. people who shouldn't have them. Now, the person who, who winds up with it if they can, they can scream and yell all they want, nobody cares. But I'll tell you what, the one time that, that, you know, battered wife doesn't get the restraining order and that, ju- and that guy goes out and kills her, that judge winds up with her name on the front page of the newspaper. Because I've looked at like, like a Jared Remy situation, something like that. Uh, so I'm like looking into this. I did some research into her and I'm like, I agree with some of her decisions. Like she, she oversaw that there was this gym case recently. The gym got shut down by the state of Rhode yeah. Island and she ruled in favor of the gym. There yeah. was a, like, it's like, she seems like a fair, but she deals with big cases. Like she doesn't deal with like some idiot saying that some guy's harassing her. I feel like this is out of her purview. Yeah, you get assigned what you get, what you get assigned as a judge. They're, they're theoretically random. So I think she just does. I mean, if you were in court that day, you would say like, she didn't like me. It was very clear. I rubbed her the wrong way. And she was going to make my life difficult. She made that very clear. But that would happen. Yeah. That would happen. You know, judges are people. So, you know, you got you to remember that they're people. So you got to deal with them like people. Well, here's another question. It's like, how is this even any of her 
like jurisdiction to rule. Like I live in Massachusetts where I did this alleged harassing occurred in Massachusetts. Who is she? I don't, she doesn't, I don't pay taxes to her. She doesn't represent me in any way, shape or form. Why is she any sort of authority over me? Um, well, that, uh, that, that is an argument. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't like, you know what I mean? Like she's not, I don't do business in the state of Rhode Island. Right. They may not have jurisdiction over you. We'll see. So, and yeah. you know, <laughs> fortunately for you, you know, you, you can live in Massachusetts and never need to go to Rhode Island. I, unfortunately, when you live in Worcester, yeah. to, get, to get to the South shore, to get to the South coast, you have to go through Rhode Island. It's like how you Why get to go there. That's a good question. I mean, some if Westport is nice. Don't go there. Matapoise yeah. is lovely. You know, Gloucester. Like, yeah, we're gonna be like Gloucester. Yeah, it's a fucking far away. <laughs> the North Shore is so much more crowded than the South Shore. Yeah, I don't I don't notice because you know I have a house here. You're way the fuck up there. That, that's like the upper everything past Beverly is like upper North Shore. That's when it gets boon. That's tops field and shit. When that below Beverly is like just fucking cesspool of bullshit. Peabody. Yeah. And everything yeah. snogus, yeah, yeah. Salem's uh, all right. Salem can be okay. I fucking hate Salem. Is the really? traffic is the, the traffic is terrible? It's it's an underrated dump. Downtown's horrible. Two of the yeah. coolest things in Massachusetts are there. What? Which the is satanic? The Satanic Temple. Okay. Another one of my clients, and uh, and Bit Bar which is also my client, which is like a 1980s video game arcade where you can drink. Sounds good to me. Are they yeah. closed? Are they, I assume that. Oh, do you represent them recently? To, I did, yeah, them? represent them. I, I got them open during COVID. And uh, part of the deal was my kids get free tokens for life. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That was like the best day ever. My kids, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, my kids are like, are you kidding me? We get free tokens forever? And I'm like, yeah. Long I'm surprised long. kids these days even have an interest in an arcade with every kid has a gaming system in their house. No, they no, they, anyone in the world. So into 1980s video games. Yeah. And kids are 10 and 12. My 12 year old daughter just rocks your face off in Cuber. <laughs> they like those games. Huh? Unbelievable. There were levels I didn't even know existed. I'm watching yeah. her do this shit. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. yeah my son likes, likes the street fighter game. Donkey Kong. Oh, Donkey. Yeah, Street. Uh, the, Donkey Kong. The yeah. Simpsons. Uh, there were some great games in the arcade back in the day. But all right, yeah. any other questions, guys, before we call it a night? Um, let's see. Anything else? And you know what? I see some of these grifters out there, and it's like obviously I it's people like Monica Cannon Grant and stuff like that, but like they're making a living doing this too. I, I hate them. Yeah. But part of me almost like respects the hustle. <laughs> like I hate to say it. And I can be the person that like we can coexist together where I expose you and all your bullshit and you can still make a living doing it. But I, yeah. I make a living exposing you. Like that's my role in this. Like Batman yeah. needs the Joker. Yeah. Like one of those, those things, you know? All right. Uh, I think. Okay. All right, guys. I think we're about done here. Uh, thank you for coming on, Mark. I appreciate it. And uh, no problem, we'll I'll get that thing fixed. I'm wicked embarrassed, but you know, oh no, we we'll can't run it. away from it. Just gotta own it. My bad. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. All right. Later. All right. Bye. All right, guys. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, again, uh, so Mark system overloaded. That's try it again tomorrow if you try donating it tonight. Um, if not, my cash app is dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. I can just get it directly that way. The the only thing that I liked about GoFundMe was the ticker. You know, like you got to see how much we were raising. And and so I'll try to provide updates as much as I can. We raised this much money. Uh, if you have any ideas about how to do that, because like this is not just an attack on me. It's an attack on you too. Like you're, I'd be so pissed if I was like went to a store and I was like, yeah, I, I want to buy a pair of shoes here. And then I go to buy the shoes and then like I leave and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. The guy who made those shoes called someone a faggot on an online forum in 2013. So we're going to need you to return those shoes. Here's your money back. But it's like, but I want the shoes. I, I'm willing to give them my money. I don't give a shit if he calls someone a faggot in 2013. I just want the shoes. That's it. And that's what they're ultimately doing to you is they're telling you that, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You can't, you don't want to give him money. He's a bigot. 
He's a racist. He's a transphobe. He's all this shit. And, uh, but you're big boys and girls. You should be able to spend your money where the fuck you want to spend your money. So I appreciate you guys. And, um, I'm going to keep fighting, man. This is, I love this. I, I, I was built for this fight. Um, I refuse to back down to bullies. All, like I said, I admire Tucker because all he does is grow and all I'm doing is growing and we're getting our profile out there. And like, ultimately this is going to be a blessing. All this tech censorship bullshit because nobody's more censored than I am. Nobody. And nobody fights like I do. And like, nobody is honestly overcome or like who, like I should not still be doing this. There's no reason for turtle boy to exist anymore. They took down our Facebook page. They took down our Twitter accounts. They banned me from Google AdSense. They banned me from PayPal. They've done every fucking thing. They've gotten all my advertisers taken down. They've done every fucking thing possible in their playbook to silence me, to make it impossible for me to make a living. And I'm still fucking here. I'm still here. And I'm always, always going to be here. So I just want to let the haters know that. Maybe Hamdi Ahmed, I'm sure she's watching. Honey, you're new here. You don't understand how things work. I'm just going to grow stronger from this. That's it. You're just going to be another ratchet in my belt at the end of the day. You're just going to be like Mosaic Cultural Complex and every other fraudulent organization, the Massachusetts State Police, you name it, that I have just fucking buried. I'm going to put you in my fucking, uh, the Turtle Boy graveyard. And that's all you're going to be for me is just another ratchet, social justice warrior, censorious Nazi that I used to build my reputation and that's it so ultimately thank you dear you're just fucking helping me that's it so thank you i really want to thank you for that hondia i win i always win okay bad guys lose good guys win i'm the good guy you're the bad guy that's it so i got an army behind me ready to fight and we're ready for you so bring it on bring it on all right, guys, so uh, we will be back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock for the regularly scheduled live show, and we'll see you then. Peace, Turtle Riders.